hello you guys so i'm gonna start this video um i was gonna do it after i did my makeup but you know what um my husband and Erlai just went out because she wanted french fries or whatever so i was like okay go buy her some i guess and so i thought it was a perfect time to record because otherwise my child won't let me do anything um I'm gonna pull my hair back so we're gonna do a little get ready with me we got church later on so whew, okay hair out of the way i just took a shower i was doing laundry ignore the background it's not cute but i'm gonna be putting on my makeup and i use this spf 45 like i guess like what is it it's it's kind of like anti-aging but it's also also sunscreen slash moisturizer so that's what i'm using i know some of you guys were curious to know how my breast situation is doing being pregnant and so i'm going to start from the second trimester because i didn't do a video doing the um second trimester update so first of all during the second trimester it started um with the whole back pain the sciatic pain sciatic nerve pain or something like that it's on my right side mostly on the right side like this is my spine it's, and then it's around like this area in the bottom near above my butt crack kind of sort of so it's that area where it's really um painful i guess to sit up or walk around too much it's just it hurts most of the time most mostly all day so that's what it started off with and i was just like great you know i at first i didn't know what it was and then my sister told me i was like oh so that's what it is and so um that hasn't gotten better i mean if i keep um moving around a lot and doing house chores and things like that my body warms up to it and so it hurts but not as bad as after i take like a, a a break and rest once it's time to get up oh my goodness it is a pain and then it's really hard for me to walk i kind of walk like granny my sister makes fun of me and i was like it hurts so bad so i've been dealing that since the beginning of the second trimester and it's followed through uh, third trimester and now it gets even worse because now it's like my entire hips my entire hip that hurts and even on the side so i can only sleep either on my right side or left side and i'm using like, these gigantic two pillows to sleep but even then it, it's just it hurts to sleep so not doing so great there um besides that the nauseousness went away after first trimester so that wasn't a problem um what else did i have itchy skin i for a while i had very itchy skin and it wasn't just my like stomach it was more like my breasts were really itchy my back and so my doctor had me tested just in case i had this other situation going on but i didn't it took off after like two weeks i stopped being being itchy until i hit third trimester again so then once I hit third trimester, I'm itchy again. But this time, it is just my stomach. It's not like last time. Last time felt a little different. Um, so, yeah. I'm using Wet n Wild foundation. That's what I've been using. Mm, I think that was it for second trimester. So, besides that, I didn't really have any other symptoms. Um, I never threw up. Nothing like that. I felt tired. I got diagnosed with my high sugar levels that was during second trimester i believe and so after taking the glucose test i was high so then they got me my little pouch with the thing to stick my finger like four times i have to like be punching it or whatever pinching it or pinching it puncture it or whatever the point is pricking it and so that was annoying i only did that like two weeks and then i kind of fell off the wagon for that and i, I kind of got the hang of when my sugar was high like i know what i'm consuming and i know when like if i drink a starbucks i know my sugar is gonna go rocket high but besides that i learned to like control it i guess with what i was eating so even though i was going to the gym b during that time and drinking lots of water um I, I kind of had it in control i also lost 
like 17 pounds because I was really heavy and so um I needed to tone it down so I was going to the gym still because I was good to go um I was cleared my doctor said that I was fine doing what I was doing losing the weight and stuff so I did go down because I was like 200 and 20 something or 30 something and I was like oh my gosh I've never been that heavy so I did go to the gym I dropped down to 217 and so then I was like yes so then I continued and then I, after that my other appointment I went up only a pound or two which is normal because I was already hitting third trimester and obviously Adara is growing so obviously she was going to be a little heavier and so I gained like a pound or two I'm assuming it's her that's gaining it and not me and that just that's what I'm thinking because it makes me feel better but um because I when I started third trimester um I started getting pelvic pain I I knew that I wasn't gonna be able to go to the gym anymore because it just hurts when I walk I get pelvic pain pain and so I can't even go to the gym anymore and I was worried because that's what was helping me control my weight but I recently went to the doctor and my weight is okay. I did go up a little bit, but it's normal because uh, that is now what, like six pounds or something like that, give give or take. She's like six pounds and something. So, um, so she's a good size still. So I'm glad to hear that I, she's not like too big. Erali was seven pounds and eleven ounces when she was born. So. So far, we're, we got three weeks to go. She's not too off, so we're good. I think that's fine. Um, what else? So pelvic pain started during the third trimester. It hurts, and I just have to walk slower, so it's hard for me to do anything because of the pain. Um, even if it's just a short little walk from here to, like, where we park the car to walk in here. I sometimes get pain and I have to walk really slow because if I walk any faster it hurts or I have to completely stop so um there's that but besides that I think oh and my blood count or my blood cells or whatever uh, I'm kind of anemic in a way it was a little low and so they had me start taking iron again I'm taking the ritual pills which I kind of been lagging on it but these are the ones that I'm taking and then I'm also taking iron so I'm, I need to start I started taking two pills because I was really low um so these are the ones that I'm taking I don't know I bought I bought them on Amazon um so that's the two pills that I've been taking iron and my vitamins and prenatals and besides that that's pretty much it um now dealing with the whole um um, mastitis granule G my GM um, I haven't I'm, I am worried once I give birth because my milk supply didn't start kicking in for Erli until after I gave birth to her and started feeding her so that's when it kicked in I never started leaking before then and so far my boobs I don't feel any milk in them or anything they're all still squishy and stuff so they they look normal the only difference that I've noticed is that the veins in my breast are very like popping out I don't know I don't remember if with Aralite that happened but I do notice that right now that my veins especially on my the one that has GM um, the veins are like really thick and like popping out and so I randomly sometimes get like shooting pain for like a second or so but um i'm trying to really blend this in because i don't want it to look funky but um so yeah the shooting pain is all that i've gotten so far um i'm nervous i'm i'm not planning on breastfeeding just because i don't want to wake up the monster um and i think i'm just gonna be struggling and stressing out too much if i want to breastfeed so as of now, I'm just, I'm like not even going to bother with it. I'm giving Adara formula and there's three formulas that I want to try with her. I'm hoping that she's not as picky like other babies. I know Erli wasn't picky when we gave her formula. She just took whatever milk we gave her and I never got her used to um, my stomach. 
okay i never got her used to like drinking warm milk so i just gave her regular room temperature room temperature um milk or even cold milk and so she would take it so i never had a problem with her so i'm hoping this baby is not picky because otherwise i'm gonna be struggling trying to feed her um but yeah i'm not planning on breastfeeding my breast i'm hoping stay calm and if i don't latch her on as soon as she's born i'm hoping my my breasts don't produce milk because then i'm gonna run into the problem of having an engorged like breast and then i'm scared that that's gonna wake up the gm and i'm gonna have to be dealing with more emergency um care visits and, and things like that and i don't want to go through that process again but besides that everything seems normal everything seems good i still have no lumps is that just that random shooting pain that i get randomly once in a while um and it's around the area where i have the scar so i don't know if my milk ducts got destroyed in like the tissue when it got cut and like all that stuff was going on um so i don't even know if my breasts are gonna are gonna produce any milk um we're just gonna have to wait and see i will let you guys know as soon as um i give birth and see how my body reacted to it um but i'm hoping i'm hoping it stays away and it doesn't basically return because i know for some people and i've been reading some on the on the facebook group that it does return for them and then they have to deal with the whole process and that's what i don't want to do <coughs> so okay i think okay so my gm so far it's kind of like sleeping um i will let you guys know if anything else comes up i don't think there's anything else going on with it um i do want to get a breast lift because my breasts are very saggy and the one that has gm um what's it called is bigger than my other one and i don't like that so i want to get that fixed but i'm scared that it'll like wake it up in case i because it's not removing the entire fat it's kind of just taking some parts of uh, uh it's just taking some parts off so i don't know and i don't know if the doctor that i want to go to is gonna do it because nobody really has gm it's a rare condition so we always got to be dealing with that so besides that i just been really tired it's my third trimester we got three more weeks to go if i make it to three weeks i don't know a lot of people think i'm not gonna make it all the way to the end because my belly is big i feel like Erali was smaller this baby's stretching me out even more so i am tired i am excited to see her i hope she comes soon i don't know i am planning to get the epidural because i'm not planning to deal with um the pain if i'm already in pain right now uh, i don't know i just i'm just gonna get the epidural i don't want to be lagging on it in the last minute having to like wait um unless i if, if, and if i'm getting induced if i for sure want to get it so we'll see how it goes i mean you never know your birth plan never goes as planned so i'm hoping i'm around the area of my hospital so i'm not trying to go somewhere else i do have kaiser so technically i could go anywhere any kaiser but i feel more comfortable just knowing that i'm where i'm supposed to be so yeah anyways um i think that was basically it so let me just quickly finish up because apparently i can't I can't do this makeup thing and talk at the same time. I do it really slowly. So let me just finish doing my makeup and then I'll come back. Okay, so looks like I am done. Um, what was I gonna tell you guys? So a little life update. So I am doing school still. I am, um, what, two semesters away. This is, I'm gonna be doing fall and then spring and then I should be graduating next 
um, April. So next year, on uh, during April, I should be graduating. So after that, um, we'll see. We really want to buy a house, and we're working on our credit because it's not cute yet. Um, so it's not a our great our greatest high score or whatever so we're working on our credit right now we should be able to manage to get it higher by the end of this year so when we apply for the housing um we can get approved so we're thinking of moving to texas and so our goal is to move there by next summer um which is a little bittersweet because we are going to miss a lot of our family and friends but we kind of just want a new start and I don't know Texas seems to be a good fit for us um I've been researching into it for like two years already and out of nowhere like this year it exploded and I feel like everyone's like talking about Texas and the genesis and the what's the California genesis or gen something like that and I was just like oh. I've been looking into it before they all started. So um, we want to buy, we want to move to San Antonio, Texas. So I don't know. I mean, if all goes well and if God's and if it's in God's plans, then that's where we're going to be heading to Texas, San Antonio. So I'm excited for that. I really want our daughters to have more room. So because of that, we kind of don't want to buy too many things going on in here because when we leave we're just going to be taking our clothes our shoes our computer our flat screen tv and my books <laughs> so i don't know we don't want to take that many things we're leaving all the furniture behind so i'm really excited for next year so things are going to start moving along and i'm really excited and blessed so i really hope you guys enjoyed this video i will let you guys know how it goes after the birth um i'm hoping my husband records well because i, I do want to see my, my experience of giving birth like because it's different because when you're going through it you kind of just like focus on that i want to see it afterwards with like more like i don't know more focus on what's going on everything else i don't know i kind of just want to look at myself in a way and see how it all goes down because i remember with Arali we recorded but it wasn't the best vlog ever so there's a lot that i miss and i don't remember so i hope i hope israel can record this time but anyways that's basically my update um i will see you guys in my next video bye